It's the largest art heist of all time, and it happened right here in Boston. This Sunday marks 28 years since thieves crept into the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum and stole $500 million worth of art. As Jared Bowen tells us, we're still searching for answers. In the very early morning hours of March 18, 1990, two men dressed as police officers rang at the security door of the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. Eighty-one minutes later, having tied up the museum's two security guards, the pair was gone, along with 13 artworks, including the only seascape Rembrandt ever painted and one of just roughly 36 known Vermeer works in existence. The theft was such a painful and horrible moment in the museum's life. Anne Hawley was the museum's director at the time, just a few months into the job when she received the phone call about a theft that would dog the institution and her tenure. It made us all, the trustees and the staff, probably more determined than ever to succeed, uh, that we were not going to let this defeat us, and, um, and we haven't. Even as Holly stepped down in 2015, she kept faith that the stolen pieces would return. As it turns out, they came close. On the 23rd anniversary, the FBI dropped a bombshell announcement. For the first time, we can say with a high degree of confidence, we've determined that in the years since the theft, the art was transported to Connecticut and to the Philadelphia area. However, we do not know where the art is currently located. They knew who was behind the robbery, they said, and were even able to track some of the paintings over the years, but the trail went cold in 2003. One of the men they were counting on to fill in the blanks was Connecticut mobster Robert Gentile. Investigators had been going back and forth for the past eight years with Gentile, even jailing him on gun charges in hopes that he'd offer up information in exchange for freedom. But his lips remained sealed, and last month, the FBI closed the book on the cat-and-mouse game and sentenced the now 81-year-old to 54 months in prison on federal gun charges. What began as a $1 million reward for information leading to the work's recovery is now a $10 million offer. Even so, 28 years later, the mystery remains. WGBH's arts editor Jared Bowen joins me now along with the director of security at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum has long investigated the case. That's Anthony Amore. Anthony, it's good to see you, Jared, as well. Is it fair to say, I even hate saying this, but is it fair to say the longer it goes, the less likely it is that we're ever going to find these things? No, no, not Why? at all. Why? Because uh, history shown that when masterpieces are stolen, they're either recovered right away or a generation later. So a lot of times what happens is the, uh, the scariest bad guy in a group dies or people become more willing to speak because they're less intimidated by people who are still around. Last time you were sitting in that exact same chair, you said something like, we're closer every day. Mm -hmm. Is that a, an honest, I don't mean you're dishonest, no, is that I know a, what you mean. an accurate statement or is it just putting hope over reality? No, I think it's accurate because I've always said we take this approach, we're trying to make this haystack smaller. Every time we eliminate a lead or, or some information, we're getting closer to the art, and I, I believe that's still true. You know, you travel the whole arts community. I, I feel guilty every year when I do one of these things because I'm saying, why don't we not talk about this except on the anniversary? Is this part of the ongoing consciousness of the art? I know it is of him and his colleagues. Is it part of the, the ongoing consciousness of the arts community in the city? Oh, absolutely. These are masterpieces. And let me just reiterate, $10 million. Everybody should stop what they're doing right now. As soon as the show is over, look online, see if you know anything. Thing, $10 million at stake, but these are unbelievable masterpieces. I mean, one of 36 Vermeers, and we, ha we had it right here in Boston, it's, it's so unbelievably valuable and just enriching. Well, you don't know as much as he does about this, but are you as optimistic as he is? If $10 million reward is out there, then what's up? I don't know. I used to be really optimistic, and I hate to say this, but I'm less optimistic now, uh, and it pains me to, to say that. that but I, I, that said, I guess I, in my heart of hearts, I believe they are going to come back someday. Can I say another thing I'm going to regret, and that will be the last thing in this kind? Right. I was at the museum, I'd say, about a month ago, mm -hmm. and uh, as I'm having lunch at the fabulous cafeteria, I've talked <laughs> about the cafeteria. Cafe. Cafe, excuse me. <laughs> I knew I was making a mistake there. Uh, the, it's, uh, sitting around me were two first-timers, mm -hmm. and you know what both were asking other people? Where are the frames? Where do I go to see the right. frames? Is it possible in a really perverse way, I know no one ever wanted this to happen, that this has raised the profile of the museum with the non-hardcore? No, I don't believe so. You know, people say that often, but you, Jared said it really well. We're talking about Vermeer. 
Vermeer brings thousands and thousands of people in everywhere they hang. We'd be getting those people if we had a Vermeer there. So anyone who thinks that we're benefiting from this is really being uh, oh, I, 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 I didn't No, mean, not you. We, we hear that often, though, uh, mostly in the blogosphere and such. But there's no way. I mean, again, Rembrandt's only seascape. I mean, you cannot. It's, it's a, a masterpiece that would be the hallmark of any collection. So uh, I think the first thing I said you said two years ago I know is true. I think the following is true. Last time I saw you, I said, do you know who did it? I think you said yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you know who did it? Yes. So well, I know, I'm obviously have to say who is it. You're not going to tell me. Right. Right. Correct. Right. So exactly. if you know who it is, and the FBI seems as devoted to this <laughs> as they are, what's up? Why? What's Why up? don't we have them? Why don't we have the men or women well, involved? The, Why don't we have any of the art? Well, the FBI did say that the the uh, people we believe committed the crime are dead. So that's why we don't have them. Um, but the, it's, well, if they're dead, why don't you tell me who did it? Well, because if I tell you who did it and we tell the public, and this is my perspective, okay. not the government's, I will go back to 7,000 phone calls on my desk from con men and people who are purporting okay. to know them. Instead, what happens is when I get calls and people mention the right people, we're able to focus in on good leads because I am still, to this day, believe it or not, inundated with phone calls and emails and letters, and most of the people are sending information that it just sends you down the wrong track, a lot of red herring. So we need to focus, and that's why we keep it proprietary. You know, uh, uh, do you think you know who is responsible for this? I think I have a sense. There's been so much that's been reported over the years, and what the FBI said at that press conference a few years ago, I was there in attendance. We know that was, it seems to have been organized crime, and, and then the, the trail went cold. But I think we have an understanding of, of how it went down, and then lost track of where they might be now. Okay, I only have a couple of seconds. Since it is 28 years, even if you're right to be as hopeful as you are, is it likely after 28 years that they're found that they'll be in decent condition based upon the history of oh, things yeah. like this? Absolutely. They always come back in, a, in either good condition or can be easily repaired. That's the precedent without question. I'm confident in the, in the condition. Well, I hope your confidence is well-founded, Judge. Good to see you. Thanks so much, Anthony. You Thank as you, well. Good to see you.